All right, today I have a Subaru Legacy Outback. I have the check engine light on. It's here for an emission test, so I gotta address something. And the codes I have are the 400 EGR flow fault and a 440 evaporative emissions. Now the evap part, the fuel filler neck is rotted out and it's really ugly back there and I don't really want to touch any of it. So I'm going to mess with the 400 EGR flow. So here's the system. It's a 2.5 and you have the EGR valve right down there and you have what's called a back pressure transducer right there which can controls the flow of the EGR valve and down where I have a test wire plugged into if you can see the orange connector there is a vacuum solenoid that controls the vacuum side of the EGR valve so there's a couple things that need to work for the valve to actually work and I'm gonna kind of go through that so what you have on the back pressure transducer is you have a ported vacuum source right here this one I believe is just a return so vacuum doesn't stay in here could be wrong if I'm wrong someone let me know and you have the outlet side of the back pressure pressure transducer which goes to the vacuum solenoid and then from the solenoid it goes to the vacuum line on the bottom half of this EGR valve so what you're looking for is when you give it throttle you'll have vacuum at the ported source and if there's enough exhaust back pressure coming through this little pipe right here up into the bottom then that'll allow the vacuum to come through to the solenoid then back to the EGR valve so we'll see if it works so here's a quick functional check of the solenoid itself. You see I have my test light hooked up to that wire. I'm on the control side of the computer. And when I give it a little bit of throttle, you see it goes to ground. My little light goes green. So the computer is controlling the solenoid. So I know that function's working. And if I look at the EGR valve, whenever I give it a little bit of throttle, and I don't have any EGR operation. You can see through right there the pintle coming down. And so I'm not getting vacuum to the valve. All right, I'm checking the vacuum source itself with the vacuum gauge on the ported line coming off of the throttle body. And if I Give it a little bit of gas, you can see I'm going to 16, 18 inches of vacuum. So I have vacuum. If I hook that back up, try to look at the, uh, just to see if the valve works at all. All right, with my solenoid connected up so I can see the computer control, I have my ported vacuum line going straight to the solenoid line which in turn goes to the EGR and you see if I rev it up you can see the computer control the solenoid I actually hear it click and you can see the EGR valve open so I know that the EGR valve solenoid is good the computer is controlling it and I have enough vacuum from the throttle body to actually open the valve so I know that function of it works, so now I need to check the control side, which would be the little pipe down here. And that's the back pressure from the exhaust. There needs to be enough to make the transducer work, so we'll go there. All right, so what I did here is I put a vacuum gauge on the control side of the back pressure transducer. So when I give it a little bit of throttle, 
and you see the computer is energizing the uh, solenoid, but I don't have any vacuum coming back out of the transducer to open the valve. So I'm going to try to pull it. So if I take the transducer off of the bracket here and expose the port coming off of the engine, that's your back pressure line. Look that back up. I'm going to put a vacuum line on the bottom of that port and blow on the other end to simulate a little bit of back pressure and see if the valve actually works. All right, I have this end. I'm going to blow into that one, and that's attached to the bottom of the transducer. So whenever I rev it up and put pressure into the system, I should get vacuum. We'll give that a shot. So when I put pressure in it, I had vacuum, so I think the valve's working. I've seen them go bad. It should hold a vacuum, you know, if you put a vacuum pump on it or something, the, the diaphragms can blow out, but this one is holding vacuum. So I'm now going to look at the back pressure side of it. The other test I didn't, I neglected to show is that the EGR valve is flowing. I don't know yet if it's enough, but if I get in there and physically push on the panel, I can make the engine stumble. And this car uses a map sensor, it's a stick shift car, it uses a map sensor over on the uh, passenger strut tower, and there's a vacuum solenoid here also, and there's a filter somewhere in line that, that can clog or something on these two I heard. So, uh, if you look at look at my this graphing meter, so I'm showing you know 1.4 volts. It is a map sensor, so if I rev it up, it should change, and it does. But what the computer is doing I, on this car, I believe, is I'll do the same thing. I'll open up the EGR valve physically at idle, and you can see I went up to. 1.9, I went up to about 2 volts, so there, there is EGR flow, I don't know if it's enough yet. I'm going to check my back pressure and see if it's just that. So on this port right here, if I put my vacuum gauge onto that, and I'll look for pressure. Okay, so I have my vacuum pressure gauge hooked up to the actual back pressure line, and you can see I do have a little bit of needle fluctuation. So there's something coming through that line. And if I rev it up, I'm really not, I don't think I'm getting enough to actually open that transducer to open up the line. So. I floor it I can get a little bit more but I think I'm gonna start with checking to see if that anything's clogged in that pipe pull it off and see if I could get because a lot of time when you pull these transducer lines off you'll get you can hear exhaust and I'm really not getting the flow I think I need so I don't think the valves opening under light load scenarios and the map sensors seeing that so We'll try cleaning it and see if I get a different result. All right, so I took the EGR valve off. It's 30-ish, but it appears to be not the source of my issue. And you'll just have to take my word for it that the car doesn't run unless I plug this port with my finger, which is the intake source. And with it running, it it's a big exhaust leak right here, so I can hear it, I can feel it. And then I took the pipe off, the one here, and it went up to the transducer. And this is the pipe. And 
if we get over where I have some light, and if you'll be able to see that, but that pipe is almost plug solid. There was a little bit more light on there. You can see it's it's rather plugged. There's one little pinhole, which is the somewhat flow I'm getting. But when I clean that out, I bet it there's a different reading on my back pressure part. So I'm going to clean it, and then we'll test it. In case anyone cares, there it is clean. It's probably only the first, like, quarter inch, maybe half inch of soot. The rest of it was pretty open. All right, with the EGR valve back in, all the ports cleaned as best as I could, and the, the pipe back in. I don't know if you can hear it because it's running, but I actually have, I can feel exhaust pulses now in this pipe. And if I put my little vacuum pressure gauge in there, you can see I have a pretty significant uh, exhaust pulsation. So I'm happy with that. Let's plug it in and see if we get a little bit of EGR movement. Now remember, this is going to be uh, back pressure regulated, so if it gets too much vacuum, it's not going to open like it does whenever I have it uh, jumpered, you know, with my vacuum connector. But we should see at least some EGR movement now. Got that back in. Hook my. So I can see I have the computer control still and if you look at the tinsel on the EGR valve I can get good lighting here 